Hi, so welcome to Stellenbosch in South Africa. This is the home of the first round of the Cross Country UCI World Cup. And of course, it's pretty cool here. The course just behind me, as you can see, is looking really, really tech, but different sort of tech from what I'm about to show you. So we've been hunting around, looking in the team tents, checking out riders' bikes. So coming up, expect to see stuff on that SRAM electronic system we've seen on Nino Scherter's bike. A top secret canyon has been spotted roaming around out here. There's some amazing paint jobs and more. So team specialized are out here on mass as always expected and they've got custom painted bikes. All of them, all the team riders have got different custom painted bikes. Sam Gaze is on a white Epic with black stuff all over it. So that's basically ready for him to race the Commonwealth Games on. That's a really cool bike. And I've checked that one out for a pro bike check. But the one that really, really stands out to me was Simon Andreasen's. So he's the Danish rider. And his bike has got the most amazing sort of iridescent glitter paint finish I've ever seen. It looks absolutely incredible. Kind of reminiscent of the early Klein paint jobs where they had those linear fades where the bike would appear to be one colour from one side and a different colour from the other. Simon's particular bike was purple and green and it just had all these crazy speckles on it. They just seemed to morph into different colours whichever way you look at the bike from. Just mind-blowingly gorgeous. But something else tech related on his bike was his brake lever angle. He very much runs his brake levers like a lot of the downhill riders do. They were almost horizontal. You watch the guy ride, he's pretty aggressive, so there's a good clue there to why he sets his bike up like that. And I've done a full pro bike check on that bike, so expect to see that soon on the GMBN Tech channel. Now, something we saw on both Anton Cooper and Emily Batty's bikes were these brand new remote controls from RockShox that have not yet been released. So some of the cool tech we've been seeing here in Stellenbosch, largely involved around RockShox. So you might notice on Emily Batty's bike here, she's got like a custom metric shock setup with a unique linkage. But more importantly, you can see there's a remote lockout on there. But now, RockShox have got a dedicated one and it's gonna be available very soon. As you can see, it's a really nice twist shift action. Check that out. They're lockout controls and they can be used for fork, shock, or both at the same time. And they're very much a sort of a working prototype version of what Jerome Clements, the EWS racer, was developing himself. So he used to use the left-hand shifter, which is a two-speed shifter designed for a front mech. He used that, I'm guessing he changed something on the internal of it, in order to lock out his rear shock on his Cannondale. Now, a few other racers have started doing that and obviously SRAM have paid attention to that and come up with this super, super neat system. It's really, really intuitive to use. It doesn't get in the way and it really declutters that whole part of the handlebars. Cannot wait to see those in production. And another Trek related thing, we've seen some slightly different sort of shocks on some of their top fuel bikes. In particular, on Emily Batty's bike, she was running a metric shock on there. So the top fuel bike can't fit a metric shock on there. It's not compatible with the trunnion mount, etc. So what they've done is actually custom made her a linkage so she can run and test that metric shock on the bike. The back end on it felt unbelievable, really, really supple. So I'm guessing we're gonna start seeing more refined versions at the next few World Cups. I've done a full pro bike check on Emily's bike, so look out for that one on the channel and take a good look at that. You can see how cool it looks with that setup on there. Virtually all of the pro bikes that we've been checking out here in Stellenbosch are running the rotor two in cranks. So they're power meter cranks and the crank arms themselves are a work of art. They're absolutely gorgeous and they're all hollowed out on the inside. They have the crank caps on the end to keep dust and stuff out of them. The thing that's different about the two in cranks compared to other power meters is the fact that it independently measures the output of both of your legs. So it's a far more accurate way of training and working on those imbalances in leg strength and the way that you turn the pedal circles around. We were looking at Jaroslav Kulhavi's bike and his mechanic showed us the difference between him running on regular round chain rings and on oval chain rings. You can really see some sort of difference between the pedaling circle. Someone who pedals quite radically is going to have quite a round profile to that. And Euroslav's was just so smooth to look at, so it clearly works very well for him. Okay, so something else cool from Specialized is the fact that they've been testing a new tyre sealant. So can you just tell us a few things about the sealant and why you've been testing this out here? So we're looking for a sealant that actually stays liquid form, doesn't evaporate that quickly, so it goes well to the end user as well. They yep. don't have to check it as frequently as what we do with our athletes. 
The other thing from a chemical side, we're looking for the tire uh, sealant that works best with our tire and rim combination yeah. and actually matches the tire rim profile to the, the wheel and so does the sealant. So I just noticed, I, I shook it up a minute ago and I can already see yeah. the, there's, the particles. Can, there's some there. particles we use inside of it, but it's a very liquidy, non-fiber based sealant um, and we're just trying getting the best out there. Are we likely to see this from Specialized in the near future? We, or yeah, not? definitely. Definitely, it's something that is, we had batch numbers, yeah. so we're close to finalizing the product and getting it to the end user. Amazing, there you go. So some great new tech from Specialized. So on the BH Lynx racing bikes, we spotted some really, really cool Suntour forks. Now Suntour have been making some really nice forks prior to 2018, but these new ones, we haven't actually seen them in the wild yet. So it's the Axon 29 inch wheel, so they do them in boost now, which is a slight improvement over the regular 100 mil size. And of course, the stanchion size on them is rumored to be bigger. Kind of hard to tell in context if they were a 34, but they're supposed to be a 34 over the previous 32 mil stanchion. So certainly they'll be a lot stiffer than the previous fork. So I was taking a good look at those forks on Jordan Saru's race bike and also on Andy Last's new race bike. And they've got the full carbon fiber crown with the one piece steerer tube in it, like serious bit of tech and so much lighter than a regular aluminium version. And also the lower legs as well, the slider of the fork, they were full carbon with a carbon brace. And they've got aluminium dropouts on the bottom. Really, really nice bit of kit that. Now Canyon racer, Pauline Ferran Prevo, has been rumored to have been riding the new Canyon Lux. Now, We've heard some rumors about the bike and we've not managed to sort of catch up with her as of yet, but I did snap these pictures in the pits earlier where she shot past on an unmarked black full suspension bike. And that looks a lot to me like they've taken the technology that's on the Torque and of course the new Spectral and refined that and put that onto the compact Lux XC frame. And the bike looks amazing. We've seen her out on the trails riding a bit. We've not actually managed to see her around to actually nail her down and have a look at that bike. But expect to see some information on that new Canyon Lux soon. Now, I think everyone is talking about and wants to see and find out more about is the new SRAM electronic shifting as seen on Nino Scherter's bike. Now, we've seen Nino flying around doing hot laps on the trail. And I shot a few really good pictures of Nino in action. And you can just about see the shifter there. Rear mate couldn't really see that. But thankfully, I had a look at that in the pits. This has been the bike that everyone has been talking about here in Stellenbosch for the first round of the World Cup. It, of course, belongs to Nino Scherzo, who's a reigning world champion. And in particular, what everyone wants to know is what is going on here from SRAM. So it's their new rear derailleur system. We know that it's a wireless type system. It's got the black box stickers on there. A lot of people have been saying it's ETAP, but of course, we know that is associated with the road world. The black box is what we know for the development on the mountain bike side of things. On this particular bike, we are not allowed to see the shifter. The shifter has been taken off the bike, so we can't see that. But you can see the shifter in some of the videos on Nina Scherter's Instagram page. You can see him actually using that. And of course, there it is in all its glory. So wireless shifting, electronic shifting at your fingertips. Cannot wait to see and play with us ourselves. What can I say? It looks really, really good and really quite final as well. It doesn't look like some of the earlier prototype stuff we've seen from SRAM over the years. This does look quite good. It had the black box telltale sticker on there. Generally in really good condition. It's got a lot of similarities, I think, with the ETAP stuff from the road world. So I think it's probably gonna be just as reliable and just as popular. We weren't allowed to have a look at the shifter itself. The mechanics are taking that off there. And also the mechanics and the people from Scott would not tell us anything. It's rumored that there's a few different options there and they're still in refinement. So that would explain why they don't want to show what they've got and give it away. So as far as tech goes, I'm really into that because that's a wireless rear derailleur. So you can just cut out all of that mess that you don't need. And although I've not got DI2 on any of my bikes, I've tried the DI2 on Neil's bike and it works fantastically, but I'm just not sure I'm a fan of it because of the cables. What do you guys think? Is wireless the future with shifting? Let us know in the comments. Love to see what you guys think. Once we'd finished filming that little section that you've just watched with me and Nino's bike, I wheeled the bike back in and was chatting to the mechanic about it. And he was just like, did you notice anything else on there? So obviously my eyes were drawn straight back to the bike. And I'd said about the debonair air spring in the fork. And he said, anything else on the fork? And I couldn't see anything. And he wiped off a load of dust that was all over the top cap. And it's a new RL3 charger damper in there. So that's the first time we've seen that. Brand new damping, brand new air spring on that fork that Nino's arguably going to ride to a really good result here. So hopefully you've liked some of the tech I've managed to find here at Stellenbosch that the 
first round of the UCI Cross Country World Cup. Let us know what you like in the comments below. Let us know what you don't like. Always like to see this sort of stuff. Of course, if you see, want to see some more tech-related videos, click down here for the Bikes of Darkfest. So when Blake was out there, he got to see all the cool free ride setups on the bikes that those guys were sending over the huge jumps. And if you want to see a really cool and quite exclusive bike check with Euroslav Kohavi's Specialized Epic, that's where you click. Of course, as always, click on the globe to subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe as well. And if you like the video, if you like cross-country tech, give us a thumbs up.